Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. Today I want to go over a bunch of games that I think are the best titles to be released on the Oculus Quest so far in 2021. We've had some great games released, we've got some great games coming soon and we've also had the introduction of App Lab which has introduced even more great games that haven't been allowed to be on the official Oculus Quest store that we now have access to. This list is my personal favourite and if you believe there was something deserving to be on this list please comment it down below and then the community can be made aware of it and I'll make a list and add it to the description as well. Before we begin to let you know that there is only a couple of days left on the Oculus Quest 2 giveaway so please subscribe to the channel and there's a link down below on how to enter and there's also a swarm giveaway for you to win a key of swarm on its release date on April 8th. So I think enough chinwagging, let's get started. Starting off with The Climb 2, a sequel to a loved game, The Climb 2 brings the art of rock climbing to virtual reality for us to enjoy. You will scale stunning landscapes that at a glance look pretty gorgeous, especially the Thailand inspired map and the city, but as you look closer it does look like a static image with perhaps something extra added to make it seem like it's alive. But this is the quest, it has limitations and you're going to be focusing on climbing. The game is super fun though and rewarding the better you get at it and the more time that you invest. I found myself going as fast as I could possibly go and leaping around trying to find different routes and it was a blast. So you have several maps and my favourite being the city because it's very futuristic, it's very clean and you'll be climbing scaffolding, brickwork, windows all to reach the peak of the city. There are two game modes available, there's casual and pro and in pro mode you'll have stamina and chalk. So you'll need to manage your energy and ensure you have chalked hands so you don't get sweaty and slip and fall to your death. The game ends up being a little workout too as you're always reaching up. So after a while your shoulders start to ache. Just good simple fun in this game, I loved it. Hyper Dash, maybe one of the best multiplayer shooters on the Oculus Quest that I am just addicted to. The game is a very fast paced title that has dashing and rail grinding to allow you to zoom across the map. It has this retro feel to it as well, you have to pick up energy perks and health and weapons that are dotted around the map. The default weapons that you have are pistols that also have a charged shot, if you hit two shots to the body they die and it's just once to the head. So you will find people mastering the art of dashing behind you, getting up nice and close and charging you to the face. The art style isn't trying to be realistic, it has bright colours and you're a bunch of bots. And because of this the game looks pretty great and has been playing really consistently on the Oculus Quest. One of the smoothest, most polished shooters on the Oculus system. And it's also cross-platform, so it does not suffer from the multiplayer curse of having no one to play with. The game is always packed. There is a domination mode where you have to hold down part of the map, payload where you have to get something to the other side of the map, while another team defends to try and stop you, and of course deathmatch, which is just this free-for-all. So much fun and really addictive. Gorn, a satirical, violent, brutal gladiator sim that is loved by the community. It may be one of the most requested games before it was released, next to Five Nights at Freddy's. In Gorn, you'll play as a prisoner who has to fight for his freedom, as gladiators do. So you'll be put into different arenas against a variety of foes using lots of different weapons that will allow you to have some brutal kills. The charm of the game comes not only from its brutality where you can cut off limbs, knock people into spikes, indent skulls, but the crazy silly animation where everything is like it's made from rubber. Which kind of takes away from what would otherwise be a really gruesome experience and turns it into a fun silly one. You can get carried away in this game but it's just great fun, great to vent frustration, simple and wacky. Swarm, I know this game isn't out yet but I've been playing it loads and it is coming April 8th but I'm putting it on this list because it's definitely a must play. This is an arena shooter but it's taken that genre to new heights and has some of the best grappling gameplay to date. The developers Green Sky have seriously nailed the mechanics and I'm excited to see what else they can apply it to. So in the game you'll battle it out in phases trying to complete the level objective which is usually kill all the enemies or survive as long as you possibly can but to get the highest score possible you have to pick up crystals that are dropped when you kill the bots because that will increase your multiplier. It sounds simple but there is enough nuance in this game to make it interesting. The grappling also has great tension that you can feel when you tug on it and this will increase your swinging speed. There is an art to the swinging and it just feels so good once you nail it. The motion sickness reported as well has been super low. The developers need to share their secrets because looking at the gameplay you'll think this would be Chunder City but it's not. And at the end of each of the phases you will face off against a boss, a classic recipe but done so well, incredibly addictive and so much fun. Crisis Brigade 2. The game 
that has been stamped with the phrase time crisis for VR, and it's easy to see why. Because it's a static shooter, you have to hide behind cover and pop out to kill enemies without getting shot. But the game can be super tough, you have to pop out really fast, be incredibly accurate with your aim, and sometimes you'll just have to blind fire so you can stay safe behind cover. You play a member of the force and are going on different missions to try and stop a drug cartel. The game does have some amusing references such as Scarface as you can see here in this boss fight, and the graphics in this sequel are so much grittier and more realistic than the first game, which had a very animated blocky style to it if you'd played it. It was one of the most played side quest titles. In completing levels in this game you gain coins and these coins can then be spent at the menu where you can buy perks or upgrades that you can take with you into the next game, helping give you the edge so you can do better this time round. The laser sight is a lifesaver so I would definitely pick that one up when you can, and you will find yourself getting sore, your thighs, the amount of squats and lunging you have to do to avoid getting shot and hide behind cover, it's crazy. Great fun and definitely one of my favourites. Arkaxa. I am a huge RPG fan and there isn't much in virtual reality, at least on the Oculus Quest, that pays homage to the classics like Final Fantasy or Secrets of Mana from back in the day and giving it a virtual reality twist. Arkaxa does just that with its third person top down view of the world as you traverse. But when you're in battle, you're going to embody your character, having to physically move out of the way of enemy attacks and using gestures to cast magical spells on enemies. Or you can actually attack them, slicing them with your sword or using a ranged weapon and shooting them. The game has something in it called the stack. You are trying to ascend the stack and as you do, enemies will get progressively harder. And if you die, you're going to be kicked out and have to try again to make your way up. But there are checkpoints once you make it quite far, so you won't have to start from the very beginning. In true RPG fashion, you can buy clothes that will give you stat boosts. You can train yourself to increase your stats by weapons, spells, potions and such. And when you're not battling, you can complete activities and puzzles with people in the towns that you visit, which makes for a nice break of play. Every now and again you will face off against a huge boss-like opponent that towers over you and it can be a little daunting. I really enjoy this fresh take on RPGs in virtual reality, it's a genre I adore. And this game is also one that has quite a cool story, it doesn't feel two dimensional and flat, but I won't spoil it. RPG fans, enjoy. There is a demo available as well, so you can try before you buy. Guardians, you may have seen my dedicated video on this game, and if you did, you'll know I just cannot get enough of this one. It's incredibly fun and a different take for a multiplayer cooperative game that can also be played single player. It has this mix of real-time strategy like Command and & Conquer and a first-person shooter. In the cooperative single player mode, you can play across three planets that all have different terrain, where you have objectives such as defend the base or protect the miner who will be going from one side of the map to another. In your loadout, you can have weapons such as a plasma bow, pistols, machine guns, a grenade launcher. There is also this mechanic where you can launch yourself into the air, a bit like the Mandalorian jetpack, but less fuel. And as you're gliding across the air and you can get a kill with the bow, it is beyond satisfying. The real-time strategy side of this game also means that you can collect minerals in-game and use them to purchase things like cannons, tanks, robots and drones that you can control and get to patrol certain areas of the map that are going to help you defend the base or the miner. There is also a PvP mode if you want to go online and battle against people across the globe, but I personally am a big fan of the cooperative experience. Great job. Jupiter Grad, another grappling title, but this one isn't a shooter. It's a virtual reality platformer slash puzzler where you play a Russian astronaut that is visiting the Jupiter Grad space station. Once here, you will find yourself having to traverse through the ship with the use of these plunger grapples. So they suction cup a surface, which allows you to swing from them with a mechanic that also allows you to retract the slack in your line. It does take a little while to master this, but it's super fun and rewarding once you do. As you're progressing through the levels, you have to avoid heavy machinery or open up passageways, and there's over 50 of these levels for you to enjoy as well. And sometimes it's not easy, so there is plenty of game time here to enjoy. And let's not forget the soundtrack of the game, I guarantee you, you're not going to be able to listen to it without dancing, it's so good. The part where this game shines though for me, the part that I love the most, is the time attack mode. Where you have these courses where you have to travel as fast as you possibly can to get through them and get to the finish line in the quickest time. The tracks get very tricky and have little nuances to them such as moving platforms, but this fast paced swinging is so fun and it just makes you feel like Spider-Man. It also has a cel shaded art style that I enjoy in virtual reality on the Quest, because they always look super sharp and bold and bright 
and they play really well. So it's a great job on this game. I love it. Some honorable mentions as well, such as Saving Grace, where you are in search of finding your old friend, Grace, and unravel the mystery behind her disappearance. I know my friend BMF absolutely loves this game, gives it a thumbs up as well, and I have to agree with him. There's also Cosmodread, which is coming out soon. I've been very lucky enough to play it early, but I cannot say anything on it, so I'm keeping harsh. I can't show any gameplay, but I will do as soon as that NDA is up on the channel. It's super scary. Finally, Crash Land, a game that is a lot of fun, but also super creepy. It definitely puts you on edge and invokes a lot of fear as you're facing off against alien beings that seem like they've come straight out of my nightmares. This is a horror action shooter that is set on an extraterrestrial planet. And as the name suggests, you have crash landed on one of these planets, which you funnily do a lot. Flying is not your forte. And you have to survive on this planet until you are saved by the space equivalent to the AA. There are different environments, but they all pretty much resemble barren wastelands. You also have a pistol that has secondary abilities available to it that you'll find dotted around the map when random supply drops occur. And that can help give you the edge because this game can be pretty tough. So keep playing, keep leveling up, and you can then eventually unlock over 30 perks that are going to be available to you that you can choose to suit your playstyle, such as extra damage, XP boost, you can slow down time, and even more. There are also 50 different creatures to battle, so there is a lot of variety and they creep me out so much, facing off against massive spiders, huge worms, creepy crawlies on such a large scale. Run, run, run. You also have a secondary weapon as well, which is a bit more powerful, but the ammo is very limited. You'll have to find ammo for it dotted around the map, but it has a scanner attached to it, so you can see where power-ups are, orbs are, and where enemies are coming from. This scanner will be your best friend because this game is creepy. So that's it from me today, guys. Thanks for watching to the end of the video, getting caught up with the latest and greatest in the virtual reality space. Please let me know what your favorite game was on this list, if you agree with the list, or perhaps there was a game that you believe to be deserving of a spot here as well. Hopefully I'll see you next time, guys. Happy gaming. Good day.